Hey guys, welcome back to Hands On Channel. Uh, today we have in the shop a 2007 Toyota Matrix. Uh, if you've wa watched some of our other videos, we've done quite a few repairs on this, but today we're going to do an oil change. Uh, it's a really easy job. Uh, if you're mechanical at all, you should be able to handle changing the oil on this thing. It's a fairly easy uh, task once you have the tools that you need. And what are those tools? Uh, first of all, as you can see, I have this thing up on the uh, up on my ramps. Uh, it's a, I can't remember the name of this thing, but it's like a lift. I can actually raise the rear end of this up and get some pretty good ground clearance. Uh, maybe someday I'll do a review on that. But if you don't have a lift, that's okay. You could use ramps or jack it up, uh, which is what I normally do is just use the uh, floor jack, jack the car up, uh, but get it safe. Use some jack stands, those kinds of things. You know, always be safe about your repairs if you're going to do anything like this. You need to have at least a floor jack and a pair of jack stands to make it safe before you crawl underneath there because you don't want a car falling on you. It's a bad deal. Uh, we have a 14 millimeter uh, socket on a ratchet, 3 8 drive ratchet. Uh, also that black thing right there you see, that's an oil filter, uh, basically an oil filter socket I guess. It goes on the end of an oil filter and then you can hook your ratchet up to it and unscrew the thing when they're really stiff. So you need something like that. Some sort of an oil filter removal tool uh, will help you out. Of course, you're going to need your filter and a catch pan of some kind. So we're going to crawl down there and get in position, and I'll show you guys uh, what you need to unhook uh, to do your oil change. Okay, we've got the creeper cam out here, and we're going to slide in, and you can see the oil filter right there. Uh, that's one of the things we're going to take off, but we're going to do that uh, second, not first. First thing we're going to do is disconnect this oil drain plug. Uh, make sure you're not over here on this side where the transmission is. That's not the one you want. The one you want is over on the passenger side. Uh, it's a black oil pan. Uh, you can kind of just see by the shape of it that it's the oil pan versus the transmission pan, which has an unusual shape. So, first thing we're going to do is grab our ratchet and get our drain pan in position. And we're going to disconnect this. It's on there pretty tight. They probably took it to an oil change place. Those guys tend to tighten the crap out of these things. Way tighter than they need to be. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed. I'm trying without busting my knuckles. Let's see if I can pull down on it. There it goes. Oh. I had to put the brute force on it. Okay, and that's kind of ridiculous. They don't need to be tightened up that tight ever. Okay, I'm gonna get this to where angled my pan angled in such a way to where when it shoots out of there hopefully I'll catch it all okay so did I get it loose enough yes okay so this part we're just going to take it loose by hand it'll start dripping here any second and we're going to quickly move our hand out of the way and move our pan in the right location there so now we just let that drain uh, for a few minutes. I usually give it about 10 minutes or so and let it drain out. Pay attention to where your uh, flow is because as it, as it slows down, you'll need to move the pan a little bit uh, to catch that. So stay tuned, guys. We'll come back. We'll remove the filter. All right. Uh, it's pretty much stopped draining. I gave it about 15 minutes. It's still dripping just a little which it will continue to do that pretty much forever so unless you have forever go ahead and wipe that off and get your plug ready which is right here go ahead and thread that back in and just give it one more wipe right there Go ahead and uh, snug it up by hand like that. I like to. 
much as you can. Go ahead and wipe off the oil pan. At least the bottom section here so you can see if any new leaks or anything like that happens. So now, so that we don't forget, we'll go ahead and tighten this up. And again, it doesn't need to be Hercules tight, just so just tight enough to make an oil seal there so that it doesn't uh, you know, leak out. Give it one more wipe in case you you know squeezed any out there. Okay, so next up. Uh, I didn't mention we're gonna need an extension for this next part. Now I've got a really long one here, but you could probably get by with a six inch extension. Okay. So we got our extension, our ratchet, and our oil filter wrench here. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. I doubt it. Okay, there it goes. Let's break that loose. Okay, now I'm going to leave that hanging there because I need to move, move my oil pan over into position. And try to do this as quickly as possible so you don't get so much of it running down your sleeve. And you can just crack it and let it drain for a few minutes. That's probably what we're going to have to do. Just let that drain for a second. On this type of filter, there's no way to really drain it all the way. You just have to drain as much out as you can and then... Uh, Deal with a little oil on your hands. Not that big a deal. Won't hurt you. So we're going for it. Just go ahead and take this off. Try to hold it upright. Pull it straight down. And straight in the oil pan. So when we come back, we'll have the new filter ready to go on. Alright, so we're going to grab our new oil filter. And you'll notice there's an O-ring right here. We're going to dip our finger in a little uh, used motor oil and get that O-ring wet so that it has a nice, uh, it's able to slide on there and get into position. Now that we have that lubed, we're going to go ahead and stick it up here. And I took a, a, a red rag and wiped that out the best I could. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Thread that on by hand, careful not to cross thread it. And you're going to have to use your own discretion on this. I usually just tighten them up by hand, as tight as I can get it with my hand. Some people like to use the, uh, the tool and put a little extra torque on there. So uh, use your discretion. If you have pretty strong hands, then you can go ahead and do what I've done, but if you've got weak hands, then you probably want to go ahead and use a tool and get that nice and tight on there so you don't have any oil leaks. Okay, so get everything wiped off really well. And after this, we're going to go topside and fill it up. All right, guys, the last thing to do is uh, put some fresh oil in our car here. And I got on the interwebs before I did this repair and uh, or this service, and uh, they say that this car takes 4.4 quarts of oil. So we're going to take our Quaker State, and we're going to pour four quarts in to start with. And one thing you can do to keep that from happening is go sideways with the jug. And it won't do that splash stuff. Uh, my old shop teacher taught me that little trick. Pretty good deal. And once you get that initial, uh, once you get off that top part there, you don't have to turn it sideways anymore, just at the beginning. So we're going to put four quarts in here. Uh, put the cap on, start the car up, let the oil filter fill up with oil, 
and then we're going to come back and you know probably add that other 0.4 quart of oil so it's going to be close to a half of a quart and you don't want to overfill it that would be really bad all right we're going to call that good we're going to put our cap back on here And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this car takes 5W30. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Basically, now what you want to do is start the car up, uh, let the oil pressure come up, you know, so let it run for like, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute or something. Then turn the car off on level ground. Now, obviously, I'm not on level ground here. I'm going to have to pull the car down to check this, but uh, that's when, you know, you turn the car off, pop the hood again, and check the oil and you'll probably need to add that other half a quart or close to half a quart there. So, uh, anyways, you know, just check your, check your dipstick here. You know, this is all pretty easy stuff on this car. There's nothing really complex about this job. And I think you can do it, especially if you're one of these people that's on the fence that you're like, I don't know, I'm a little intimidated by this. Uh, I believe in you just be safe about the way you, uh, jack the car up and stuff like that. And before you get underneath any vehicle, you make sure that it's safe, you know, that you wouldn't, uh, definitely wouldn't want one falling down on you. So, all right, guys, that's going to conclude this video. Happy wrenching. Uh, one last thing you want to do is after you do an oil change or any kind of a repair, uh, start the car up and all that stuff and come back in and just check, make sure there's no leaks or anything. Make sure you didn't, uh, uh, you know, miss something or forget to tighten up a bolt or didn't get the, maybe you didn't get the oil pan tight enough or something. So check those kinds of places and, uh, you should be fine. All right, guys, happy wrenching, and we'll see you next time.